Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're gonna break down how Borussia Dortmund comfortably destroyed Paderborn. When we break it all down and we do look at the board, we have Borussia Dortmund in their 3-4-3. De Hood was unavailable as he is injured, and Erling Haaland was also not available. So that ended up seeing Emery Chan and Jaden Sancho move into the starting lineup. Paderborn played in more of a 4 4 1 1. And when we look at how Dortmund were able to break them down, first we have to see how Paderborn looked to approach the game. In that 4 4 1 1, they had Mamba up front, and Mamba wasn't looking to press all three center backs. He was sticking ahead of Hummels, and that allowed a Kanji and Peace Check time to push forward. The key thing here was that midfield battle, and what we ended up seeing was that Sir. Benny was a bit higher, but he was looking to track Emery Chan, who was dropping off a bit deeper. Vasiliadis was pushing into the path of Delaney, and the reason why Sean Lau was sitting deeper ahead of the back four when Vasiliadis was pushing forward was the threat of Julian Brandt. Brandt was dropping off deeper consistently into that midfield zone, so when he did that, Sean Lau was tracking that movement, and at times you ended up seeing Brandt looking to pick up the ball ahead Head of that Paderborn midfield bank. So when you look at it, there wasn't really a man marking scheme there. If the Dortmund players did vary their movement, there would be times where Sean Law had to step forward. Then you had Vasiliadis drop off a bit deeper, and that's how they were able to cope. So they rotated with the Borussia Dortmund midfielders, and they were able to limit Borussia Dortmund's impact in that center of the pitch. Out in the wider areas, you had Antwi Adje and Holtman, and they were tasked with the movement of Rafael Guerrero and Hakimi. So that means in that front line, what you would see was that the center backs were tasked with Hazard, and with the brand dropping off a bit deeper, that does give Drager a bit more opportunity to step into Rafael Guerrero if he does push forward. And that also means that Collins was tasked with Jaden Sancho. That's how they look to approach the game, and Dortmund had to try and find an answer to break them down. So what you ended up seeing is that with that midfield battle kind of contained by Paderborn, we looked to the front three, and what the front three ended up doing was this. You know that Brandt was dropping off deeper, trying to receive the ball between the lines, trying to find the ball in those gaps, and at times he was successful doing that, and the same thing does apply to Hazard dropping off a bit deeper. Jaden Sancho was holding the flank, but he did drift laterally and there were times where you saw him shift as far as to the opposite flank on the left hand side. Hazard predominantly was dropping off, but there were times where he was making runs in beyond the center backs and in between the gaps between the center backs and the full backs. So when you really assess it, there wasn't much space for them to really impact the game from that movement. And the key thing here was the fact that one, peace check was free and he was playing positive balls and so was Hummels in that first half and we'll get to that in a second. But the combination out in the wider areas was always going to be integral because if you could get the ball out to the wing backs, what Dortmund constantly try to do is they get the ball out to Hakimi or Guerrero beyond Holtman and Antwi Aje and that forces Drager and Collins to push out to close them down. So if you pull the full backs out to press the wing backs, then that creates space for Sancho or Hazard or Julian Brandt to make darting runs to push out Hunemeyer or Strodiak. An example of that movement would be when Hummels clipped the ball over Antwi Ajay into the path of Rafael Guerrero. That pulls out Drager and what we end up seeing is Sancho on that left hand side darting between Drager and Strodiak but Strodiak does a good job of tracking that movement and ensuring that Sancho can't push forward. And another example would be when we saw Delaney fizzle ball across Vasiliadis into the path of Sancho ahead of Drager. Drager steps out to Sancho, but what we locate here is Rafael Guerrero moving narrow because Sancho was holding the touchline. And Rafael Guerrero ran off Antwi Ajay and looked to dart in between Drager and Strodiak to receive Sancho's poke ball across Drager. But once again, Strodiak did a very good job of tracking that movement to ensure that Rafael Guerrero couldn't push forward. So with those wider options taken out of the game, Paderborn doing a decent job in the center of the pitch. The other option would be to go over 
over the top. When you look at Paderborn's setup, there was Lucas Piszczek who was able to push forward and have a bit more time on the ball. Yes, we did see Hummels clip out diagonal balls out to Rafael Guerrero and Sancho, but he was predominantly pressed by Mamba. So Paderborn were warned in the earlier stages when Piszczek pushed forward and he located Hazard making a darting run across the center backs. That ball went over the top and what we ended up seeing from Hazard was that he was able to get ahead of Strodiak to push into right half space but his shot was denied. And shortly after that we saw something similar. This time Hakimi was close by Holtman out on that touch line and he was able to square the ball into Chan and before Sir Benny could step into him he located Sancho from the left running across Drager into a gap between Drager and Strodiak. That ball goes over the top from Chan but the only issue that Dortmund have here is that Jadon Sancho's first touch is poor as it should set him free on goal but the ball ends up going horizontal and that kills that play. So they had the threat over the top but just weren't able to make the most out of it and their attacking play out in the wider areas where they attempted to push the wing back higher and pull up the fullback so an attacking player could dart between the center back and the fullback didn't work out due to Strodiak doing a very good job. So when you assess how Dortmund were able to unlock Paderborn's back line, yes Jadon Sancho will get the headlines for the hat trick but the key components to Dortmund getting into good areas when it wasn't in transition was based off peace check getting time on the ball obviously the wingbacks getting beyond Antwi Adjay and Holtman and the fact that when they broke into those spaces there was good combination play with the attacking players ahead of them when we break down the first example, Dortmund should have went up 1-0 just ahead of half time. We end up seeing Akanji playing a loose square ball to Piszczek that could have been intercepted by Antwi Ajay, but Piszczek was able to bypass Antwi Ajay and slide the ball out to Hakimi on the touchline. So Hakimi played the ball into Hazard, and Hazard wrapped the ball around Collins for Hakimi breaking beyond the left back. When Hakimi breaks four, he's able to skip beyond Hunemeyer, who is is nutmegged and then he locates Sancho breaking towards the box across Strodiak and Drager. So he plays that ball across the back line and it ends up bypassing Sancho and the Paderborn defenders but it falls to Julian Brandt making a run from deep towards the edge of the box but his first time effort was skied over the net. And in that buildup, you see the significance of peace check. You have the combination play between Hazard and Hakimi, and frankly, Brandt should score there. When we look to another example, we go to the second half, and once again, it is peace check on the ball, free to play a diagonal ball out to Rafael Guerrero ahead of Drager. When Rafael Guerrero receives the ball, that's when he locates Hazard drifting laterally across to that left channel and dropping off Strodiak to receive the ball. Those two combine, and Rafael Guerrero receives the ball just beyond Drager. And by the time Drager does come across to try and close him down, Rafael Guerrero is able to play another square ball across the box. It's intended for Sancho ahead of the center backs but it ends up evading him and it ends up also evading Chan who dummies it ahead of Collins and it falls into the path of Hakimi breaking into right half space and he's denied there. But in that buildup, what you end up seeing is peace check free to play the diagonal ball. Rafael Guerrero running beyond his marker in Antwi Ajay. The combination between Hazard and the end result ends up seeing Hakimi running off Holtman to get into a good goal scoring position and he should score as well. So when you look to the build up to Dortmund's opening goal you witness a similar sequence. It's Piszczek stepping beyond half to bring out the ball. No one steps towards him and he ends up playing another diagonal out to Rafael Guerrero ahead of Drager. When Rafael Guerrero wins that ball he locates Chan running forward. Antwi Ajay doesn't track him and Vasiliadis doesn't shift across to close him down. So that's another 2v1 situation there and Rafael Guerrero squares the ball out to Chan who's able to break free into left half space and he brushes off Strodiak and he ends up delivering a cross in towards that six yard box that's pushed into the path of Hazard who's able to tap it in. Yes the keeper does make a mistake but in that buildup we've seen this reoccurring theme throughout that game. Peace check pushing forward and no one steps to him despite the impact that he's having from deeper positions and Rafael Guerrero 
Pirlo running beyond Antwi Ajay. And what should happen there is that even if Antwi Ajay is beat, he still has time to get across to Emery Chan. He doesn't do that, and that's how Dortmund are able to exploit their back line. Dortmund were able to double their lead shortly after that, following a quick transitional attack when Antwi Ajay gave away the ball in midfield. And even when they try to bring on substitutes in Mikel and Zolinski, they were able to get an equalizing goal from the spot, but Dortmund were able to quickly respond and put the game to bed. What's interesting about that third goal is it was an element of the move that they try to create on a consistent basis in the first half, but once again, Again, it's Rafael Guerrero breaking free down that left-hand side. You have Chan on the ball in a deeper position, and Zelinski and Antwi Ajay are ahead of him. Chan simply splits both of those players to find Rafael Guerrero breaking beyond Antwi Ajay, and he quickly wraps the ball around Drager for Hazard making a darting run in between Drager and Strodiak. This time, what we end up seeing is that Hazard quickly pulls the ball back beyond Strodiak into the path the Jaden Sancho who's beyond Vasiliadis and ahead of Huna Meyer and when Sancho receives that ball he finishes superbly and Dortmund were able to kill off the game. What we ended up seeing from Paderborn here was that they did cause Dortmund one specific threat and it was in space beyond Rafael Guerrero when Dortmund were looking to attack. Antwi Ajay was able to break into that zone to run at Akanji and we ended up seeing Drager making overlapping runs. However when Antwi Ajay did get into those good positions he was unable to test Berkey. We saw Holtman speed down the left hand side as well and what we ended up seeing was that in the build up to that goal that initially did peg them back within one. When Paderborn did a good job of pulling Dortmund out of position down that right hand side, what we ended up seeing was that Drager was able to break into the box, there was no Rafael Guerrero down that side, and Antwi Ajay was able to leave it to Drager and that's what forced Emery Chan to make that diving block. But when you break down that game as a whole, yes Paderborn did have an initial good approach, but what we ended up seeing here was that Dortmund were able to eventually pull them out of position through the wingbacks pushing beyond Antwi Ajay and Holtman. The fact that Paderborn weren't looking to step into peace check and he played a key role and the fact that Hazard, Brandt and Sancho were getting into good positions and we have to also add in Chan to combine with those wingbacks and then Sancho's great goal scoring to ensure that Dortmund at least make it somewhat competitive at the top of the Bundesliga. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.